As commander of the fire team, the responsibility is mine. The battle on the surface is what precipitated the battle in orbit. That's what devastated Ganymede Station. That's on YouTube. According to our investigation, it was Private Richard Travis that fired the first shot. He was born on Earth. His parents oh, emigrated no. to Mars when he was a child. Okay, I see their plan now. Recently, they take responsibility, but they actually try to blame the... Earther. And what better way to do oh. that than to take out some Earthers? Oh. oh, that's so shitty. That's so shitty. We appreciate your candor. Thank you, Sergeant Draper. We can't change what happened, but we can move forward in the effort of peace. Ganymede Station is an important food supply outside of Earth and Mars, and it's in neither of our interests to leave it crippled. We're willing to discuss reparations. I mean, I get that's their way of preventing a they war didn't have to and say taking. All that crap about Travis. Why yes. didn't you tell me they were going to say that? Because I knew you'd react like that. Travis was a good soldier. He died for Mars, and you all just threw him into the goddamn crusher. Travis did die for Mars, and if that story stops a war that we do not want, then he died a hero. You did well in that, Gunny. The hard part's over. You can relax now. This young man is a perfect scapegoat. Mm -hmm. Almost purpose-built. Yep. Give to us in the mouth, Christian. I never understood that idiotic face. Mars won a battle, but they didn't intend to Does fight. Does anyone, anyone know the meaning of that phrase? War, so they let us stick them with the bill she has for a good point. I don't get it. completely <laughs> happy, but everyone comes out of it with something. You know what that's called? Horse trading. I think you're gonna like it. You be careful down there, Arthur. Be careful up here, Marshall. Hmm. You too. Roll of Ganymede? I think that covers everything. Almost. We're going to need a statement from your government accepting responsibility. You're not going to get one. Never hurts to ask. All right, then. So we're done. One last thing. I'd like to speak to Sergeant J.P. again. Oh. I have a few questions. Uh -oh. Just little things I need her to clarify. Madam, this has been an exhausting session. I find it hard to believe that a Martian Marine would be fatigued from sitting in a chair. We all came here in the hopes that we could begin to trust each other. And it would be regrettable to undo the progress we've made over something as trivial as this. I want to speak with Sergeant Draper. Now. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hang on, bud. Why? I want to do my part to make Mars a new Earth. An entire nation dedicated to a common goal. To turn a lifeless rock into a garden. A dear friend told me that. Mm. He wanted to retire to Mars, but he died. Did you know that the majority of people on Earth don't have jobs? They don't work at all. They live on basic assistance, which the government provides. I did know that. You call them takers, I believe. Yes, ma'am. It's not that they're lazy, you know. It's just that we can't give them enough opportunities. In this building, it's easy to forget. All due respect, madam. Where are you going with this? Where am I goddamn like? <laughs> Travis's parents. She just says that stuff with such a huge smile. Dream. They gave up everything to go to Mars. To provide a better life for their only son. I'm sure Travis believed in that dream as well. He did. Were other Martians prejudiced against him for being from Earth? Yes. Was he a good soldier? One of my best. Do you really believe that after all that oh, sacrifice and all his training, the 
training that made him, as you said, one of your best soldiers. Do you believe, after all that hard work, that Travis would jeopardize the lives of his fellow soldiers by foolishly dropping the gun? No, I know. Then why would he open fire without orders? Did he panic? I don't know. He... he... Then why did he fire? Well, we... What was the reason? We thought we were under attack. Under attack? So you were fired upon? No, he, he was trying to kill the enemy. I didn't even know what it was. Nobody did it. He wasn't wearing a vest. So Sergeant it... Draper has been through a severe traumatic mm. event. She needs to rest. Whoever the fuck you are, stand down and let her speak. <gasps> Unless there is something you don't want her to say. No. Do as you've been instructed, Sergeant. Sergeant Draper, what made you open fire? It was Travis. He panicked. Mm. Well, yeah, but now Eva Sorella knows you're lying, well, and she's not going to just let that shit go. Your questions, ma'am. Thank you, Sergeant. That will be all. You see his face, though? He's, like, kind of panicking. Oh. I feel like... Like, and that didn't seem just like, okay, I'm worried that something I know is coming out. That seemed like, shit, something not in a vacuum. I'm interested. Yes, you're a good boy. Stop. Hold it. Go in on that. I mean, there's something left of Miller and Julie? Should I even hope for that though? Because what would they be? Oh. No way. Most people are just gonna shoot this at us. And this slab of me, I'm taking out a sense of humor, can I can't move. Now, are you gonna call the Harbor Master and get us clearance to leave or not? All right, all right, we have a deal. We got to talk to
Well, that wasn't a very, uh, happy ending. <sighs> All right. Well, that was episode nine. Um, so I I'm a little curious as to what they're trying to say or do with that, that little story that they went through in this episode where Holden and the crew kind of commandeer this aid ship as an attempt to sneak down into Ganymede um, for their purposes of trying to find Prax's daughter but also figure out what's going on with the protomolecule and you know what were they doing these scientists who clearly are tied to protogen but also are doing work with children like Prax's daughter who seemed to have weird special condition um, and so they commandeer the ship so they can sneak down there and try to figure this stuff out without having to identify any of the like Martian forces around there or anybody at all. And this is what happens. I mean, the, the, the aid workers, it seemed as though they were going to be in potentially like threatening danger regardless of what Holden and, and the crew did. But, you know, maybe not. Maybe those guys just would have stolen their ship and their all of, all of their cargo and not done anything to them. I don't know. Maybe they would have killed them. All we do know is that Holden and Amos charged in there. There was a firefight and then the, the man was killed in the process. Um, and, you know, maybe that wouldn't have happened if Holden and them hadn't commandeered the ship. And so I don't know if it's trying to say some sort of message about kind of what she was suggesting about Holden being on this like crusade or a cause, which can kind of, you know, as, as a general theme we've talked about throughout the series, can kind of, you know, lead to actual people who supposedly are helping being caught in the crossfire or sacrificed, which is what we saw happen to Julie. Um, and a lot of people that Dawes, you know, seems to supposedly be fighting for with his cause. Um, so I don't know if that's sort of what they're trying to get into, that Holden is, is making the same, that sort of choice. Um, maybe that's sort of what they're trying to get into, but at the same time, you know, they're, they're right to say that if there's something growing on with the protomolecule, they have to find out. And they're, if they're searching for Prax's daughter, you know, that is, that is important too. So I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that situation. And I, I also don't feel like maybe they were necessarily wrong to go back in there and try to help. I don't know. It's kind of complex, I guess, I guess. Um, so overall, this episode seemed like a lot of setting up for some of the big things that maybe are going to be coming. So there was a lot of setup, obviously, with Holden and the crew of the Rossi going down to Ganymede. They're now about to actually go on their kind of mission, searching for Prax's daughter and for information. They've set it up so Alex is kind of waiting outside so he can swoop in and rescue them if necessary, if they can't get off any other way. But as I think I was saying throughout the episode, you know, I'm sure that things are going to go terribly wrong and nothing will just go easily according to plan. But we'll see. We'll see exactly what happens. Right, Speck? Yes, good boy. Um, so that was being set up. And then actually the, the scientific mission to Venus was also being set up quite a bit. You know, we're getting to know the dynamic on board the ship. Um, there's Colonel Janice, and I don't remember the doctor's name. So if you guys know the doctor's name, please throw it out there for me. The one who's there on behalf of Abbasarala. They obviously are having differences of both kind of seem to have good intentions, at least so far from what I can see. And then, they're, so they're setting up their dynamic, they're setting up their concern about Mars, they're setting up their actual investigation, and then we see near the end that they do find something that's suggestive of, um, of, of something remaining from Eros. So as I said, who knows what that's going to be and what that suggests. Um, about the protomolecule and what it's done and if there's any Miller or Julie left or any of the people that were down there or if it's totally become something different, I don't know. But that's clearly what that, that was setting up. And then the big, the big kind of thing throughout the episode being um, Bobby and the Martian uh, uh, diplomatic group arriving to Earth for this summit that Abbasarala and Aaron Wright have set up that's supposedly, supposedly about peace talks. And then we find out that the, that Bobby's kind of story that she was supposed to tell includes throwing uh, a Travis 
who was the Martian marine but had been born on Earth, throwing him under the bus. And that, that kind of gets us to, so that's what Mars was trying to do by saying they were going to take responsibility, but by having Travis as kind of the scapegoat, they could say, okay, so technically this was our fault, but it's kind of an Earther's fault, really. Um, so it was, a, it was a way to kind of save face, but also maybe stop a war from happening. And you can see the potential benefits of that, but at the same time, Avicerala can tell Bobby's lying, and Bobby doesn't like the idea of just sacrificing Travis's reputation um, and telling a lie. And, and you know, as I said, you can see the benefits of preventing a war with that lie, but at the same time, there literally was some creature, <laughs> some protomolecule creature out there. And I don't know, maybe none of the Martians uh, believe Bobby. Maybe they think that she was just hit in the head or so she was not sure what she was seeing. So maybe that's why they don't want to share this information. Um, I don't know, but it seems like it's something pretty important that probably needs to come out. But I have the feeling that Avasarala is not just going to let that go. So I'm imagining that's also something that was set up there. She's going to try to figure out more about the situation. So yeah, as I said, it was a pretty much, it was largely a setup episode, but they did get into, you know, what's going on with, with Holden and the choices he's making. And we learned some more about Bobby, and I liked everything that we saw with Avicerella this episode. It was, I, I felt like this was largely her episode, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, mostly a setup episode, but still very good, very interesting. I was thoroughly entertained all the way through. So guys, if you have anything that you think that I missed, please do leave it down in the comment section below. And that includes, you know, the questions that I had had throughout this episode. Um, otherwise, if you just have any comments or questions for me, you know, please leave those down below too. And so I'll say thank you so much for joining me. And once again, thank you so much to all my patrons for your support. And my apologies to everyone about, about everything that's been happening with the Expanse and copyright issues. And I'm hoping that things will be cleared up again soon. All right. Thank you guys very much. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.